next week uh, it's going to get really cold we've got so far six days where it doesn't get above freezing the whole time the uh, lows in the nighttime are down to single digits um, so it's going to be cold you guys it is it's really cold <laughs> Checking out the thermometer, so it's 947, excuse me, I don't know what I was doing there, it is 47 degrees. Something I'd read was putting ping pong balls in the water. So one of the things I noticed online is people were saying that um, this did not have the wood insert in it. It's not supposed to. This is a commercial grade, so it's supposed to be a metal stud and actually comes with uh, metal screws to use. Those are your floor brackets. So between your wall um, and your opening, your pocket door is over here. This is where the first bracket goes. This one goes halfway in between. So this is your wall opening. This would go halfway in between your wall opening and your last bracket before you hit the actual door itself. These are the uh, black screws, are the ones that will screw into the metal. And then uh, these wood screws. Um, when you put this in, it has uh, the slot opening here, so the closed end goes on your brackets like this. So if it's on your floor, it will fit just like that. Converse on the other side, you will have the open end out, and the first ones will butt up right against this trim piece. Use these. Uh, screws will screw into this wood plate there. And that's pretty much it. It goes pretty pretty quickly. Uh, one thing I noticed is that I bought this one pre-cut uh, for a 30 inch door. However, when I bought the three foot pocket door in the exact same brand, it was actually cheaper. And the only difference is I would have had to have cut this down. Um, beyond that, it was the exact same thing, but it was cheaper. So you can get the pre-cut ones to your door opening, um, or you can buy uh, the full length, the three foot one, and then cut it down. So this is a soft close. So it locks in. Do a soft close on either direction. It's a nice feature. There's one on, on both sides. So Door will be you know, hanging here in the middle, soft close in both directions. Anyone who's had a pocket door knows that that is a really nice feature because uh, pocket doors tend to get slammed one way or the other without that uh, feature on them. Um, another thing, the railing uh, bearings inside the commercial one, these are actually on. I don't know if you can see them or not, but instead of just a plastic bushing, these are actually on bearings. So it should last a heck of a lot, a lot longer. Okay, I get ready to hang this pocket door and um, made my openings wider, of course. And so I had to fur this in, which is fine because on the back side of this is uh, pretty tight. So, First step is going to be to uh, put a chalk line along the bottom. Matt? Yes. Now he's been teaching the girls tap dancing, so they're upstairs quietly tapping. He's just some spare roofing nails. I'm the kind of guy that goes around and when the roofers are here and they drop nails over the place, I go pick them up. Uh, some of these nails I've had for a very long time. So, you're supposed to be 84 and a half inches up, which is exactly what I'm at. So, all I need to do now 
it should slide right up in there. We have a taller opening that fits in there better. And just edit that part out, right? Just using inch and a quarter tap cons. I don't want to go too far because I've got a radiant floor in here. Um, so everything was measured off the outside wall. So if I were six inches off the outside, so every foot is aligned. So right now I've got a. I'm gonna go ahead and mark these while I got this up. I've got a radiant line right here. There, there, the other one's out here, it's out of the way. I went ahead and marked my second location. So I'll finish drilling this one out, get one screw in it, and then move on to the next one. That's that pretty easy. So once everything's drywalled, I can hang my door in there and then trim everything out. We appear to have a new kitty. That's as close as he's gotten. Sydney said that she saw a cat out here that she didn't recognize. And there he is, or she. Pretty kitty. We're supposed to get awful cold weather this next week. Today is, I think it's maybe 34 right now. This is gonna be the warmest day for the next 10 days or so, so lows in the teens and single digits. Anyway, something I'd read was putting ping pong balls in the water with the movement, just any movement will help keep that layer from freezing. So I had some and we figured we'd go ahead and give it a shot. So went ahead and tried that out. We hauled, we usually had buckets along there to collect rainwater. We went ahead and hauled all those up to the house so we could put them inside where they will be warm. They think I have treats. You guys always think I have treats. Anyways, we took them up to the house to have them inside the barn so that we can have the water there that's obviously not frozen. We cleaned up in here. I mean, we do it every month anyway, but I put an extra layer of the shavings down, the pine shavings down. Also, we had put some coverings on the two main windows in here because you want to have, you still need to have ventilation but you need to have anything drafty because that's the that's the issue you don't have any drafts in your coop so we have the plastic up on there and then we have this door over here i have that part covered up so there will be no drafts in here and it should be pretty cozy the other thing i wanted to talk about is the actual roosting area itself with this we have two by fours you want to make sure to lay them flat so the wider area is what they're going to stand on the reason for this is this will protect their feet from getting frozen. So what happens here is if you have the flat part, they will have their foot flat on the board and then they will crouch down on top of their feet 
to keep them warm with their body. So they should be okay. Everything should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and bring a water container in here because because of their body heat at night, that's supposed to have enough heat around it to keep this above freezing this room. So that should be good to go. Also giving them plenty of food. Chickens need an extra, well, they'll be eating an extra 20, 25 to 50% of the feed. Yes, they are free range, but you'll need to supplement them with extra food going into the winter. Another suggestion is, which we actually do this anyway, we'll give them some, some treats, some scratch before they come in for the night. But they really suggested doing that because those extra calories are really beneficial during the night because their, their metabolism is so fast. To have that will help warm them up and get them through the night. So we should be ready to go. You guys, it is, it's really cold. <laughs> um, so I, I'm back down at the chickens doing the ping pong balls that did not work at all. It just froze around them. And actually this one, you can see the cracks. I had broken this up a couple hours ago. This one I didn't break, but the ping pong balls didn't do a darn thing. Okay, it's been below freezing all the day. We are in the uh, beginning of our cold snap. So I'm in the pump room here and checking out the thermometer. So it's 947, excuse me, I don't know what I was doing there. It is 47 degrees. It is uh, 19 degrees outside. So let's get down to, I don't know, 10 tonight. It was 14 last night. And then the lowest it's going to get in a couple days is down to 6. So definitely be a test on our pump room here to make sure things don't uh, freeze. So far, it's doing pretty good. The only heat that's really on right now is just from the camper. You know, when the furnace is going, it blows heat out. When we're cooking stuff, it blows heat out. And then, of course, we have the pellet stuff going upstairs. But it's uh, to about 65 up there. And it's, was it 47? Is that right in here? But if need be, I do have this uh, little tiny space heater. It's made for, like, camping and stuff. You're supposed to hook a propane bottle up onto this side. But I hook the actual house uh, propane up to it. So we are using that for the dogs at one point when they were in here before I put all the pump stuff in. So if it gets really cold, I'm monitoring this and it's starting to freeze. I'll go ahead and fire that up. Um, I've got some water buckets that we're hauling down to the chickens because you literally put it out there and it's frozen in an hour. But so far, so good. Um, not noticed any issues with anything, so that's good to know. Definitely a good test of our system to see if it gets down to you know, really cold that uh, the system can handle it. So see what happens in a couple days when it gets down to six.